Hey folks. Um, I uh, kind of had a couple of a couple of different thoughts colliding today, and and I'm sort of trying to I guess orient and figure out okay what's what's really coming through right now. But it was the thing that kind of uh, came up right as I was coming out here to do this post was a thought that I had, I think it was yesterday while I was practicing and also this morning a little bit, I'm getting ready for this event, you know, a couple, you know, in one week, one week from today. And it's, and I was thinking about, you know, I know that one of the things that I'm gonna talk about on this event is how we see what we would call mistakes if you're practicing piano, but really what then just become reframed as discoveries if we're in a particular mode of playing we see that the mistakes we made this is kind of my whole thing about you know discovery mode versus performance mode in discovery mode we're not scrutinizing or judging what's happening we're actually just receiving what's happening and and what we what we eventually learn is the mistakes are teaching us something we didn't know and so on some higher intelligence level the mistakes are actually something we intended we intended to make the mistake in order to reveal something to us and if we can really get that then the entire process shifts everything changes about practicing piano and, and everything changes in our relationship to what's happening in our hands what's happening on the in in the sound everything just changes because now all there is to do is listen and discover and go deeper and play and you know there's never anything repelling us out telling us we're doing it wrong or you know creating this this opportunity for judgment and this is something that it's it's almost like this there are all these analogs that are now kind of popping up in my life like i was talking to someone the other day about uh when i was in uh, physical theater school where we would you know create these pieces I think I talked about this in a post like two days ago where basically you know you're creating a piece from scratch and one of the things I learned was you often will not know exactly what your theme is you'll be on stage doing a piece and you think it's about one thing and the audience tells you very clearly that it's not um, I also had the experience of seeing that from the audience just any number of times over and over again you see like oh they think they're doing this but they're not they're talking about something they're about something else and that's another version of this where it's like I mean it's it's not so much a mistake in the sense of like I didn't play the note that Mozart wrote or whatever but it's like you think you're doing one thing and you're actually doing something else and the way in which you're diverging from your conscious intention is actually a deeper form of intention it's actually it's actually not just um an error or a failure to accomplish the goal it's actually a, a trajectory of inquiry it's a trajectory of inquiry that our subconscious is is taking us on in order to reveal something in order to highlight something teach us something new expand our awareness you know, you could very easily argue that the that the function of theater and the function of these of the performances that I'm talking about is to reveal these subconscious themes and to teach us what it is that really needs to be said by us, what it is that you know really needs to be looked at and seen, and then said. So instead of instead of the instead of hearing, oh, I'm not doing what I said I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold on tighter and really try and do what I was, what I think I wanna do. Being willing to listen and being willing to, to see what is it. You know, ultimately, of course, as, a, as an artist, you want, you, you gain the ability to create your intention. You be, gain the ability to see something and create it. And the more, I think my experience has been that the more experience we get we see more and more of these patterns we we more and more get a sense of like oh our subconscious needs this needs this needs this needs this and little by little that stuff starts to become conscious now it's not in the way anymore but on the, but along the way to getting there what we consciously intend 
also changes. We would never go back and intend to do the same thing that we did before we had all these revelations. So that's kind of another manifestation of this idea of discovery mode. Um, one memory that came back to me recently was being on stage when I was uh, in, it was my first year at Conservatory at Roosevelt. And I decided to do this concert. God knows why I thought this was a good idea, but I decided to do like a two hour concert with myself playing four or five classical pieces, including a, a Bach partita that had like eight movements. And um, also accompany a singer, fantastic singer named Neil Medina. I was playing a bunch of his music, so I was reading his music, but my music was all memorized. For some reason, in like the first semester of our of, of going to school, I thought this was a good idea. And uh, and it was a good idea. It was just a lot to bite off. And I and I and I had an experience of being on stage playing this Bach partita, slow movement, second, I think, or third movement. Slow movement did not you know, hadn't had any trouble in with it, practicing it, and I just spaced out just lost where I was. Poof, the music was gone. And I and I was like, oh shit. So I started over again, got to the same exact place. And even as I was approaching it, I was like, oh God, uh oh, I think I'm not gonna. So, and it was like everything just, it was like the gears just ground to a halt. There was no going through it. And I, um, remember the experience of being there and like, you know, like ice in your veins kind of thing. No idea what I'm gonna do. And I look out at the audience with this intention of like, I'm gonna play with this. Like, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this part of the show. Like, I'm gonna somehow make it playful. And I got, a, I had a kind of, a, it, you know, I don't know how many people were in the room, 25 people, maybe not. It wasn't a huge audience, but it was a full, you know, a full uh, concert hall. And, and, I, and they just kind of stared back at me. Nobody was laughing. And I kind of like improvised an ending to, the, to get me out in the right key and then just started the next movement. And I was kind of unsettled from, from, from then on. It, was, it, it definitely kind of rattled me. But what I remember was right up to that moment, right up to that moment, I had been playing in a way that was so, I just felt totally free. I felt like I was, I felt relaxed. My hands felt relaxed. I was feeling the keys in a new way. I felt like I was, the music was singing in a new way. And there was this just really beautiful feeling of kind of being one with the music. And and and, the, and the, you know the one lesson that i extracted from that at the time was well you know you really want to make sure that when you're practicing you really know the difference between like having it in practice and having it in performance is a big difference you know which now i'm trying to in in some ways blend that difference like blend uh you know like i like i've said this is the big the greatest virtuosos i've ever seen feel like they're always in discovery mode they're never in performance mode um and discovery mode in some ways is what keeps them so fresh, keeps everything so present. Um, but the lesson that I've extracted more recently in reflecting on this is that I actually enjoyed the moment of turning it into a relationship with the audience. There was a way in which I connected with the audience and I, and I felt like, they're seeing me have this experience right now. And I had no ability at the time to construct a response or to construct or to even, or to even really uh, create a, um, a way through that in terms of like turning it into a bit, turning it into something that was a game with the audience or that was a, that was a piece, you know, that let me really express what was going on. But it was an opening of that. And if you, if I look at the rest of my, uh, 
life and and sort of career since then and what I've pursued and what I've gone deep on and what I care about, what, what I've really turned into the bread and butter of my work, it's piano with humor and with silliness and being a goofball and making the making the kind of imperfections part of the perfection part of the thing part of what makes it so unique in that moment you know and that's what I, that's what i've been coming to recently is like I, that 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 moment was a doorway that moment was an invitation it was a huge um invitation into who I really deeply am and what I really love to do and who I really am at the keyboard in front of an audience. What, who am I? It's not, it's not about being perfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about being real. And it's about allowing, it's almost like inviting the audience to, to, to kind of be on the, on the journey with me, letting them in on this, on this catastrophe that I'm experiencing or whatever, you know, there, there, there was something about that that I've extracted recently as a lesson in the context of the work that I've been doing that feels really important because um, every mistake is an invitation. Every mistake is a subconsciously intended thing. And if that's true, if you take that to be true, then it has to apply to everything. It can't just apply to the ones where it feels like it's, a, where it feels safe to make that statement. It has to apply even when it feels unsafe, even when it actually takes us to the limit of our ability to, to have faith in that and then step into a new level of vibration, a new level of faith in that. So, so that's kind of where I've been today is just ref kind of like riffing on and reflecting on these uh, various ways that the lesson that I'm making so central to my teaching right now and that I'm making very central to my own practice right now, all the different ways in which that's manifesting in my life. Um, so it's big. This is a long one, folks. Thanks for listening. I love you all. I really uh, appreciate all of you for, uh, you know, just for being in my life and for receiving these messages. I'm going to be posting more again soon about this business, which is off. It is off the ground. It is launched. It is happening. I'm going to start signing people up here shortly. So love you all. Great to see you. Um, I will talk to you again tomorrow.